and welcome to this tutorial on how to sew this cute little cat bag. It has two versions, one with a cat face and ears and the other one with a sleepy kitty. So for sewing this bag we'll need this pattern which you can find in my description. It's the Muslim bag on my Etsy and before cutting, printing and cutting this pattern please make sure that the test square has the correct size. And I also printed these embroidery cats, um, which I want to use to embroider my bag. And this one is going to go with the ears. I have this tissue paper to help me because I want I don't want to damage my needles too much. And I will copy this onto the tissue paper. I'll just draw it on here and place it on the for fur or for leather and um, I'm just going to sew on top of it to make sure I get the pattern right. Then I have here my outside fabric and my lining fabric and I also have the interfacing which is uh, quite sturdy and also another interfacing which you can also use which is a bit less sturdy but also gives it some structure. So now I'm copying the embroidery pattern of the cats onto the tissue paper. I also like to trace the outsides of the circle so I can allocate it in the correct position later. Then I'm tracing and cutting out the pattern pieces A and B out of the interfacing and um, cutting it without the seam allowance. When cutting the ears out of the main fabric, keep in mind to cut two mirrored pairs, which I messed up in this case, but I fixed it later. And for all other pieces, um, just cut out the pattern pieces as indicated and add one centimeter of seam allowance. You only need to cut pieces A, B and C out of lining fabric because we won't need lining for the ears and loops, obviously. Also don't forget to add seam allowance again. So now you can see all of my pattern pieces. I have the fabric and also you need a 30 centimeter zipper. Then. I have my back chain and carabiners and also the next step will be to sew the lo loops out of PST. So now you can see how I do it. I just fold it inside so it looks neatly from the outside and I sew over it just like any strap. The next step is to sew the ears right sides together, the mirrored pieces and then I trim the seam allowance with my special scissors and turn it over, make sure it's all neat and then I like to top stitch it so it looks a bit more like cat ears. Do the same for the second ear so again trimming the seam allowance, turning it inside out and now you can see that I'm top stitching it a bit more round to 
make it look more like cat ears. Now I'm applying the interfacing to pieces A and B. I like to put a piece of cloth in between so I don't burn it and I always check regularly if it's sticking to the fabric or if it needs a bit more ironing. So now we have to prepare the embroidery session. I pin my pattern to the fabric which we traced earlier onto the tissue paper and then I carefully sew on the lines we marked. Just take your time. I sped up the video by a lot um, because you don't need to see the whole process in real speed but I really took my time. I also used the hand wheel to make it look really neat and accurate. I like to use a bit thicker thread. Um, in this case I use thread that is usually um, sewn for jeans. Um, so it's a bit thicker and you can see it better than normal sewing threads. I'm doing the same for the other cat, which has a bit more different lines and takes a bit longer. Afterwards I noticed that I preferred the look to have also the yellow thread for the ears so I top stitched them again with the yellow thread. So let's go on. The next step is to sew the piece C to the zipper, right sides facing each other. I took the zipper apart to make it easier and then I attached the lining to the zipper by facing the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper. I fold it both over afterwards and yeah I'm doing the same for the second piece and I fold them both over and top stitch them. So it falls flatly and it looks really neat. Then I close the zipper again and now I'm securing the loops in place. I already put the carabiner in because we won't be able to put it in afterwards. I'm just going over it with a few stitches so it won't come off when I attach to the next pattern piece. Doing the same on the other side, just sew over a bit. Now we're going to attach piece B to C and for this it's a lot easier if you close the zipper on the side you're sewing and also be careful when you're sewing over the zipper because the metal parts could break your needle. So go really slowly. I use my hand wheel to probe if I'm going to hit the zipper and then just wiggle it around a bit so I won't break my needle. You'll have to do this on both sides for the main fabric and then also sew 
the lining to the other side. So you're sandwiching the zipper in between. Then you have a big loop. And this loop should fit perfectly to piece A, where we have the embroidered cat. And just make it fit by easing it into place, pinning it all around in a circle. Again, just take your time and make sure it's all nice fitting. When sewing it together, if you have uh, an interfacing that's as sturdy as mine, you won't be able to lie it really flat, it will be more like a disc, so it's a bit weird but you can manage. Just go slowly and sew all around and then we go and do the same thing on the other side. I also like to trim the seam allowance to make it easier to turn it around later on. When sewing version X and attaching the ears, I like to secure them in place before sewing the piece A to B and C because it makes it much easier. So I just look at it where I want the ears to sit and then I sew them by easing the ears to the curve of the circle. Now we do the same thing as for the other cat pattern, just that in this case we have to make sure the ears are on the inside and then just pin all around again, just ease it in a bit, can be a bit tricky but if you have one centimeter of seam allowance on both sides it should fit perfectly. Try to film it a bit more close so you can see better how I'm sewing the one centimeter seam allowance around the back. Now I'm trimming the seam allowance again to reduce bulk when I'm turning it around later. Now it's important that you left the zipper open because now we can turn it around and see what it looks like. If you see any thing that doesn't look very neat, you can still open it up and sew it again. Now for the lining we have to squish the whole back to the middle and sew the lining right sides to the lining we have already sewn. This is a bit trickier than for the main fabric because you have to put the lining over all of the material that's already on the back. So for the first lining you don't have to leave a gap but for the second one leave a gap, so you can turn it around. I left a gap for both sides just to make sure because sometimes I get a bit confused. 
So here I try to show it a bit more clearly. You squish everything in the middle together, place the lining fabric on top and close the circle. Looks like a little cushion. You have to apply a bit of force to make it sit properly, especially when sewing, just to make sure that all of the layers are sewn together. For the lining it's also fine if you're just sewing on to the seam allowance. Just don't sew too far in or you'll have wrinkles. Now we can finally give birth to our cap bag by turning it inside out through the gap we left. I like to make the gap a bit bigger to make it easier because the interfacing is really sturdy and it's gonna make it really hard to push it all out. Um, but just apply a bit of force, make sure that you backstitched before and after the gap you left and then it should be fine. After Pulling it out of the hole, just turn it inside out through the zipper. And the last step is to hand stitch the gap we left with a stitch that's invisible. And then we can just attach the chain to the carabiners we sewed in. I like to put the carabiners in this way because you can attach the length of the chain. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.